Joining us now uh, for more on the inaugural GOP debate and former President Trump, Lanhee Chen, a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution. He served as a senior advisor on four uh, presidential campaigns. I won't out you on this, but um, can I? What is, yeah, sure. Is Trump going to be the nominee? Is that is that what we're figuring out? I mean, is there any stopping yeah. him, Lanhee? I mean, it's it's I, I, for. I don't know what you think about that, and it, it can strike absolute terror in a lot of people, and a lot of other people are just saying, yeah, as it should be. So I don't know what you think, but is that the end result of all this? We're going to yeah, go I, through the moat. Go ahead. I mean, he, he's the odds-on favorite. I mean, you, you have to look at the the elements of this, right? You look at the polls, and not that the national polls tell you a whole lot, but even if you look state by state and you go early. Uh, he's got leads in Iowa and New Hampshire and the places he needs to be doing well. He's got infrastructure. What people don't realize is that to win a Republican primary, it's not just about leading in the polls. It's not just about performing well in a debate. It's do you have the infrastructure in early states like Iowa to actually go the distance to show that you can build an organization to succeed? He's got that. So it, it's just difficult for me to see. I mean, last night's debate, I know we talk a lot about it. But it's not going to change the fundamentals of this race. It's not going to change the fundamentals of where this is headed. And so I do think that Donald Trump remains the odds on favorite. I don't know that there's a whole lot that will alter that. I mean, look, four indictments, a lot of news coverage that's not particularly positive. So, you know, I, I think this is uh, this is where we are. We're in a place where we're going to be headed for a Biden Trump rematch. So in the same two groups of people I was talking about, there's a. It, what I think DeSantis, I don't know whether they're deplorables or listless vessels or what the, what's the latest <laughs> acronym for uh, for the Trump uh, supporters. But the more that the Biden administration or that Georgia or whatever, the more of that that happens, the more motivated they get that something that this is a, you know, it's it's not the same. The scales of justice are not being uh, doled out properly. That's that's for better or worse. That's what's happening. The Democrats seem to understand that and want. Do they want Trump to be the nominee? Of course is they do. That, I mean, is that a smart? Yeah. So will that pay off or is that a miscalculation? So well, he gets, I, becomes a nominee and then doesn't win. I, I think a lot of it depends on. Uh, listen, if if they sit back, Donald Trump's the nominee. He's very polarizing. I've often thought Donald Trump is the one Republican that Biden probably could beat. And on the flip side, I think Biden's the one Democrat that Trump probably could beat. I think it's going to be a very, very close election. It's going to come down to three or four states, as it always does. And if you look at the numbers in those states, the interesting thing, Joe, is that Pennsylvania is a great example, right? Pennsylvania is going to be a critical state. Donald Trump's actually running probably three or four points ahead of Joe Biden. If you look at recent polling, at, you know, reputable sources show that actually Donald Trump's doing pretty well with independence in Pennsylvania. So the Democrats do have a problem in the sense that if they look <coughs> state by state at the states that actually matter, Donald Trump's performance actually isn't wholly bad. So I, I do think that Democrats think they want Donald Trump. I think that probably conventionally is right because he is so polarizing. His negatives are so high. But at the end of the day, you know, you got to you got to be careful what you wish for, because in these states where where Trump's got uh, some support, uh, those are states, as it turns out, that are going to be significant to this election. Do you think uh, it's a slant? Is it 100 percent Joe Biden? I mean, I think it's pretty close to 100 percent. I think there, there haven't been Amazing. a lot of really strong uh, elements within the party that have tried to step forward and say something else. I'll say this. I think there are people ready to go if for some reason Joe Biden doesn't doesn't make it to the finish line. Like who? Uh, I, I love Gavin, Gavin Newsom's Newsom. ready to go. G okay. Gavin Newsom's ready to go. His hair's ready. Yeah. Uh, we've always been ready. Uh, yeah. And, and you know, there, there's probably others as well. You know, Gretchen Whitmer in, in yeah. Michigan. You've got uh, Gina, Rem Gina Raimondo from within yeah. the administration. She's right? I mean, she's in China she's this China. week. But, yeah. but, but yeah, I mean, listen, there, there, there are a lot of people who I think could be ready to go. But uh, what I come back to is, is, you know, elections in the U.S. generally come down to the state of the economy. They generally come down to how people feel about the economy. Well, we usually and don't have a guy running from prison, prison if yes. which is possible. That's, that's, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? I mean, I'm, I'm not saying one way or the other because I don't I, I see the, the, how someone could think that during an election year to throw all these different. But one of those books has to be a. A reasonable book, though, that are getting thrown at him, don't they? Isn't there something there, Lon He, that that could be disqualifying, or is there nothing there that should be disqualifying? Yeah, this is going to be the the core, I think, of the Democrat argument, which is why you know, I mean, yes, they're talking about Bidenomics today. I don't think they're going to be talking about Bidenomics come you know next summer. 
I think next summer they're really going to be focused, if it's Donald Trump, they're going to be focused on all of these legal issues. But, you know, at some point, Joe, I do wonder, like, does it all become noise for people? Uh, yeah, look, the guy's, uh, you know, an unsavory character. He's, he's probably violated a bunch of federal laws. But at the end of the day, I'm not excusing the behavior. In fact, I think it's deplorable. But putting that aside for a moment, I just think well, politically... Well, I did. I used the word. I used the word deliberately. But politically, I just think at some point it becomes noise for people. And, and uh, Michelle O, no way. Andrew says no. You don't think there's any way. She doesn't no know way. Her. And you can't, you can't leapfrog over Kamala, can you? That's not fair. No, there's a lot of people in line. There's a lot of people in line. And it's going to be interesting if, if there is a contest on the other side. That would be the interesting contest.